So let's start with work processes of the past. Um, the nature of white collar work pre-World War II. Routine, standardized work procedures of information technology, uh, pencils and paper ledgers. Post-World War II, primitive electronic adding machines uh, adding to the work process. Um, then the post-industrial service economy fully unfolded in the 1980s. Uh, State-of-the-art technology uh, as it began. Uh, number two pencil and yellow pad, uh, black rotary phones, uh, IBM Selectric typewriters, and for the more sophisticated Texas Instruments handheld business calculators. Uh, but advances in information technology ultimately redefine the very nature of white collar knowledge-based work. Uh, three information technology stages uh, or eras uh, are shown in this slide along with the dates of significant technology product introductions. And I think I have had every one of these products on my desk uh, at one time. Uh, the first era is pre and early PC. Uh, many of you may be too young to remember but in 1981, IBM essentially legitimized and created the personal computer industry when it introduced its first desktop computer. Remember, it was called the IBM PC. Uh, it used a little-known operating system called MS-DOS uh, 1.0, made by a little-known company from Washington State named Microsoft. Uh, ancient history was Prediction made by Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft in 1981. 640K ought to be enough for anybody. Uh, five years later, Intel introduced the 386 microprocessor. Uh, it had 275,000 transistors and a million electronic components. Ancient history two, 1986 prediction made by Bill Gates. 386 base machines will finally give desktop computers all the power that most people will ever, ever need. Um, indeed, at the time, the 386 capability led to the first killer app, the Lotus 123 spreadsheet. Um, this quickly became the industry standard, and work processes slowly started to change. Uh, it then took us until 1995 when the internet um, started to become a force for a second era to unfold. And I call this PC intense fiber optic. Uh, and the Pentium based PC finally became a window into the internet. Uh, the Pentium Pro microprocessor uh, actually had 5.5 million transistors. Uh, currently in 1995, Microsoft released Windows 95. Bill Gates officially unveiling it. This was followed a week later uh, with the introduction of Internet Explorer, uh, and that became most people's first web browser. So as a result, increasingly powerful desktop computers reigned supreme as the 2000s unfolded. And the forces they unleashed were truly, truly disruptive. So many of the basic work processes that once defined white collar work started to disappear. Uh, but the relentless odometer of technological history uh, never stops. Uh, by 2007, the outlines of a third information technology era began to take shape, mobile internet untethered. Uh, the Pentium 4 microprocessor helped drive this era, 125 million trans era, transistors. Uh, and this era is unshackling workers from fixed in place technology systems. Uh, in 2007, just 10 years ago, uh, the start of the smartphone was introduced, uh, Steve Jobs uh, unveiling it. Subsequently, along with tablets or iPads, uh, Ultrabooks, and 4G LTE wireless broadband speeds, threshold increases in mobility were achieved. Uh, these serve to sever information technology umbilical cords, and this enabled workers to work any place, any time. Uh, so this era has further disrupted many 20th century work norms. The very nature of white collar work, the shape of the economy, and office building functions have been transformed. Now I should have pointed out to you earlier that uh, forecasters on 
unfortunately, are not held in very high esteem in New Jersey. So a brief story about Albert Einstein proves instructive. Uh, while Albert is queuing to enter heaven, he meets three people. So what does he do? He immediately asks them about their IQs. The first says, 190. Wonderful, says Einstein. We can discuss my theory of relativity. Second answer is 150. Good, says Einstein. I look forward to discussing the prospects for world peace. Third person mumbles, 50. Einstein pauses. So what's your economic forecast for next year? <laughs> In any case, further advances uh, will not abate. Technological capabilities just keep on coming, and applications are becoming ever more sophisticated. Uh, outlook, further disruptions to all established protocols as a result of advances in IT and AI. Uh, AI, artificial intelligence, is just in its emerging stages. Uh, today, it resembles the internet of the mid-1990s, so if that's the prototype, it will soon be built into everything. AI everywhere, just as the internet uh, is everywhere today. When we think of AI and robots, we often think of this guy. Uh, is this our next knowledge-based economy disruptor? Uh, does automobile manufacturing provide a precedent? Uh, this is the way we once produced automobiles, high-paying, blue-collar jobs. This was actually the production line at the Ford plant in Mawa, Bergen County, New Jersey. It opened in 1950, uh, and it was the largest automobile factory in the world at that time. Uh, it closed in 1980 and has long since vanished. Uh, this is the way automobiles are produced today fundamental disruption to an entire industry. Uh, will AI have the same impact on white collar work in offices as robots did on the blue collar workforce in factories? Uh, here's a possible scenario that we may traverse as technology advances. Uh, early stage young robot, mature stage robot, robot helper, robot player, robot assistant, robot challenger, robot dominance. Uh, until a half decade ago, artificial intelligence really wasn't at the academic forefront. Uh, now it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, we are now just at the end of the beginning stage of AI. Is the robocalypse about to unfold? Uh, I don't think so, but AI will continue to produce substantial structural changes in the workplace. Uh, what does this mean for the knowledge-based office of the future? The office of the distant past, where routine, manually intensive processes prevail. Uh, the office of the present, information technology rules. Uh, is this the office of the future? Uh, artificial intelligence rules. Uh, will human thinking be and creativity be supplanted by AI? Uh, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, but certainly AI has the potential to automate and aug augment tasks previously done by humans. Uh, finally, further uh, transformational innovations. Uh, we're certainly going to see transformational innovations that we can't anticipate today that will be future economic game changers. Uh, the great AI awakening and machine learning are poised to reinvent computing itself. Uh, there's certainly an arms race for AI talent and an industry-wide machine learning delirium. So what has it already yielded? Autonomous vehicles uh, certainly have the potential to fundamentally alter many spatial and land use dynamics. So too, the potential cascading impact of drones. And both of these technologies were not on our radar screens just a short time ago. So the world we think may be coming may not be the world that actually arrives because of potential innovations and disruptions by things not yet invented. Now, for those words you have been longing to hear, perhaps desperately longing to hear, in conclusion, <laughs> actually that sigh of relief I heard was premature. My conclusions tend to be very long. Uh, seriously, uh, thanks for paying attention this afternoon. Uh, it has been much appreciated, and I hope we did not reach this audience stage today. So, thank you very much.